Hey everybody, Nick here, and today it brings me great joy to finally reveal something I've been working on in secret for a long time. Many of you have said, and many of you know, that this channel is a review channel, right? I get other people's designs and other people's work, other people's fabrication. I bring it on the channel and I talk about it. I give it the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Might be a gem, it might be junk. But I talk about other people's work all the time. And sure, occasionally I'll do a stealth review or something like that with a maker and they, they'll show me a prototype and I'll offer some constructive criticism, but it's still, that's not my design, right? It's fundamentally them making the decisions. And of course, I've done little tiny things like this. This is the Nick Chavez, um, uh Victorinox Classic. It's, uh, this is, to be fair, I mean, not necessarily my work either, right? It's a Victorinox. They just branded it pretty. And by the way, these are uh, back in stock at Blade HQ at the time of filming. But nonetheless, I have never actually designed something from the ground up. I didn't have the CAD skill. I didn't have the fabrication skill. I didn't have any of that. So I thought it was never going to happen. And even though knife makers have approached me, trust and believe, I have had many knife makers sniffing around like, hey, Nick, if you want to design a knife, you want to do it. And I've always told them the same thing. Like, guys, I suck at knife design. Every time I sit down to draw something, it either turns out derivative or ugly or a little bit of both, right? And so fundamentally, um, it's not something that I am good at. It's not a core competency that I have. And in the same way that a food critic shouldn't delude themselves into thinking they're going to be a chef, I probably shouldn't do that either. But finally, a project emerged which felt like it was right, where it felt like, yes, this is my time. This is my time to finally design something. This is the situation. I am finally working with a manufacturer I trust, and I am able to do this. So um, today, it brings me absolute great joy to announce my very first personal design, my very first project that is me from the ground up. It is right here. Actually, not right here. What's this doing? I don't design a knife. I suck at knife design. It's this guy right here. This is the Nick Shabazz disassembly tool holder. <laughs> Now, I know what you're thinking, Nick, come on, you had us all fooled, right? It's a freaking piece of plastic. I thought you were making a knife. No, I'm not going to make a knife. I still suck at knife making. Everything I said is accurate, right? And to me, honestly, it would feel a little bit insulting for me to dive into knife making or watch making or pen making when I just don't have those skills. I would rather appreciate and help in whatever way I, I can uh, people who are actually good at it rather than pretending that I am too, right? So that's still not going to be a thing you can see, but this is... This is an actual thing. Um, this right here is the Nick Shabazz disassembly toolkit holder, and this is the result of a, uh, a actually a fair amount of work behind the scenes. Um, as many of you may know, I do a lot of knife disassemblies, and for a long time, I used this. This is a piece of Kaizen foam that has been sort of butchered, and although he looks kind of nonplussed about it, this has been what held my tools for the majority of videos, right? This screwdriver lives here, and it kind of sits up there, and then, you know, you put your nano oils and your knife pivot lubes and such in here and then you know some stuff you just kind of like bleh, put in there and it kind of works but the thing is it's an ugly ugly solution and it's also very large right it's not particularly dense and it's also kind of ratty right it served me very well but it wasn't the right thing and so recently I decided you know what I want to play a little bit with this, not because I'm going to be a knife designer, because I'm still not. I still would suck at that. But I wanted to learn how to do some 3D printing. I wanted to learn to do some 3, uh, you know, uh, CAD design, basically. And so I did. I ended up picking up a 3D printer, ended up going with a uh, the, the Prusa Mark III. Um, absolutely, it's been great. I did the kit, built the whole thing myself. Then I taught myself CAD. And I, I this is a weird choice, but I ended up using OpenSCAD, um, which is a, uh, it's basically programming-based. Um, the, the design and fabrication. Um, it's a little bit more difficult, but in a lot of ways, it makes a lot of sense to me as a programmer. It feels like, oh, cool, I can just do these four holes in a for loop. That's a lot easier. There's a lot less GUI, and it's also open and open source. I can use it on Linux. I can use it on Mac. I'm not reliant on some company like Fusion saying, oh, yeah, that personal perpetual license. Yeah, that doesn't cover all these features anymore, right? I've been burned too many times by proprietary software promising cheap. That uh, So I ended up going that route. But I I learned and taught myself CAD, and I eventually came up with this. This was the very first iteration. Well, technically, this is the very first iteration I managed to finish the print on. A couple of times, I definitely screwed some things up, but you can see that there were some problems, right? 
I don't even know what this was going on here, but I'm assuming it was some kind of weird, uh, you know, alignment error with the printer, but this was my very first go around. Um, and this is designed to hold all of my tools, but the very first go around, as is the case, I'm sure, with any product, had some problems. Although this worked fine, the unchamfered holes were not particularly elegant. And some of the things, like for instance, this had a lot of uh, room for play up here. That wasn't great. And the place where I'm supposed to put my Leatherman, again, massive amounts of room for play. And then we had the other fundamental issues with it, right? Like, for instance, just a bunch of things didn't fit that well. It didn't look particularly attractive. Um, you know, places for, th it just, it wasn't a great start. And I wanted to just make it a little bit better. I wanted to class up the joint a little bit. And so I went with a second iteration here. And this is my second iteration. And it's pretty close to the eventual version. But my problem is, well, I decided to tweak the Leatherman holder and then, yeah little too tight. You can see I tried to sand it down a little bit, but I, uh, I, I, I just missed a millimeter in there because it turns out that if you measure it here, it's a little bit thinner than if you measure it on the screw. Hey, details, right? But anyway, so I screwed that up. And I also realized that carrying my tweezers, because these tweezers are an important part of my disassembly, but keeping my tweezers tip up like that, although reasonable at some level, is very, very sharp. And so I was reaching up to things and then, you know, this is this is a danger zone right here. So I wanted to do my tweezers tip down. And I also wanted to include a couple of other things, right? You know, for instance, I have over here my, uh, the, the, on the original version, I had a slot for one of my very best disassembly tools. That is your uh, standard US quarter. And um, that fit fine. But I also needed one for my uh, standard US penny that's been ground into a span a bit. So I went ahead and did that. And, um... Eventually, uh, with some tweaks, ended up on what I think is going to be a final version. And this is designed to hold all of the tools I use for this assembly. See, a lot better. Put that here, put this here. Go ahead and drop in my uh, flashlight here, which I use during disassemblies regularly. My uh, thread locker. Go ahead and put my uh, drivers in order. One cute little element of it is these drivers are magnetized, so they actually pull each other together. So you don't get them to stand up in the, the, the way that you might expect them to. But hey, whatever. Got some room in the back here for uh, some extra bits for my uh, bit driver. Go ahead and, of course, as everybody needs in their disassembly toolkit, we've got our uh, $900 screwdriver, which I'll go ahead and just drop on in there. I've got room for a bunch of watch spring bar tools. I probably don't need four of them, but at the same time, it uh, sure doesn't hurt, I suppose. Um, I have room in the center here for a little pin, uh, which can on occasion be very useful, although not super frequently. Then in the back here, I've got a place for my uh, KPL, knife pivot loop. If you're curious about any of these tools, nickshabazz.com slash tools. And then a case for the, or a place for the nano oil. And you'll see that the nano oil is in its own hole. And uh, if you put the knife pivot lube in there, it's a hot dog down a hallway. But they're uh, sort of custom bespoke. Uh, yep, that's KPL, nano oil. Got a place here for my uh, rat bastard um, Enigma pocket tool. Snaps down in there, which is beautiful. Got myself a place for the uh, Leatherman here. And this little um, Benchmade uh, and or other brand of pivot tool is there too. And then I've got my little home for my tweezers, these little guys. And then right here, do want to make one little tweak there before I push the final pile. And then my little guy here. And then, of course, a little hole for the uh, swatches of fabric. And as a result, I have all of my pivot tool or all of my tools for this assembly sort of in one place. And I can now lift it. With my foam dealy, I could never actually lift it because a lot of stuff was, well, about to fall through, right? So now I can lift this. I could take this downstairs to my kitchen table if I wanted to and leave it there. I've got a little room here to, you know, get in there. Pull. Um, and it, it works. It's sturdy. It's fine. It's 3D printable, and uh, it's absolutely a beautiful thing. Now, of course, I could, you know, mill it out of titanium if I had the skill and machinery to mill it out of titanium, but I didn't. So I just made it with a 3D printer, and I think the whole thing costs like two bucks to print. And the thing is, uh, one thing that you all might not know about me is that I am very, very much an open source zealot. What I mean by that is that I really, truly do believe 
that, well, by and large, information should be free, right? And people should be, have access to things that will make their lives better if it costs nothing to make, give them access to it. And so rather than trying to sell this, rather than, you know, pairing up with a manufacturer or anything like that, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to make the, uh, the two kinds of files available for it. First, I'm going to make the actual STL file available. If you have exactly this same set of tools, then you could absolutely just print one of those on your own and then put all of the things in here exactly as you have there. Um, and you could, or you could order it from one of the uh, online 3D printing houses where you just send them the file, they print it up. You can do that too. Um, I don't expect any payment for it because, dude, it's just a chunk of code. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to include a uh, the source file from OpenSCAD uh, or OpenSCAD. I don't know how exactly it's pronounced. But what that will do is it'll allow you to edit the file yourself. And if you're using a different set of pliers, you can do that. Or if you're using, for instance, a different flashlight, you can make a bigger hole for your flashlight. You can take this and you can modify it and you can remix it and you can turn it into your own little special situation. And because OpenSCAD is free, you can do that without spending any money, right? Well, okay, you'll spend some money to print the damn thing. But, you, you know, the, the software is just there. You can use it. You can remix it. You can make it your own. And, you know, I have no expectation of remuneration or anything like that. My Patreon patrons make it more than worth my time to do this kind of thing. Um, and, you know... Honestly, it's just, it's a little tiny thing. Is this going to be useful for any other human? Honestly, no, probably not, right? Like, unless you have exactly my set of items that you use for disassembly, and I know some people do, um, this may not be the most useful thing ever, but it brought me a lot of joy to actually go through and make something, and it also brought me a lot of sympathy, right? You know, I, and I feel like I've developed a fair amount of manufacturing sympathy over the years, right, um, as I've been going through and doing the things I'm doing, but um, at the same time, you know, just realizing that, oh, damn, that, that one millimeter really screwed me over here, or realizing that, you know, wow, I, I thought that this was a really good idea at the time, but then I actually tried it, and no. No, it was not a really good idea. And just understanding that process. Look, I'm not sitting here saying that I'm any better at CAD than, I, you know, John Grimsmo, I am not. But at the same time, it's a fun little project, and it's taught me a little bit of something. And, you know, it's been a joy, honestly. And I've been using the 3D printer to print other random stuff around my house. I have a, a holder for my uh, razors uh, that maybe someday I'll throw up on there as well that uh, is, you know, designed to hold a, a, a safety razor, a brush, well, three razors and a brush. And, I, you know, that one I'm not quite ready to show off yet. I got some tweaking yet to do. And I've been using it to print door stops and other random stuff that I need around the house. It's been a really nice, I'm not going to say it's been a good, investment but uh you know maybe in a maybe in a couple of dozen years it'll be a good investment right but at the same time it's brought me a lot of joy it's taught me some new skills and it's finally made me a maker right you know i've done a bunch of stuff you know i've made light fixtures around the house but this is the first time i've made something in cad the first time i've done any kind of manufacturing even if it's in a a, a you know dumb little home sense and it's in something i it's brought me joy and it's something that i'm frankly proud of right it's not much right and if you compare it i'm sure if john grimm's mo or some other CAD wizard were to, you know, knock this out, it would be like, you know, freaking Winter Blade Co. would, you know, have it launch kittens or something. But at the same time, not kittens don't deserve launching. Be kind to kittens. But anyways, I, I, I'm sure there would be some other way that you could do it fancier, but I'm happy about it. And I want to share it with you all because maybe it does something for you. Maybe it doesn't. Either way, brought me some joy. So anyways, keep an eye out for that. I'll go ahead and I'll post a link to the GitHub down below here. Uh, and uh, if you end up using it, let me know, right? I mean, leave a comment on the video, leave a comment in the GitHub, whatever. If you make some changes, that's awesome too. Fork it, have fun. It's open, it's free. Enjoy. And uh, most of all, I, I hope you found this slightly interesting and that you uh, have yourselves an absolutely rest, uh, wonderful rest of your day and that, uh, well, you may see this guy in the background in some future videos and now you know where it came from and what Jack has to blame if, you're, if yours has issues. Have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.